What's up YouTube? Today we're talking about the Mustang SVO. How far I've gotten and its next voyage to tuning. So I've just about got our pigtails all finished for the coils. I think it was like five bucks a piece or something for these plugs, probably less than that. Uh, it was it was quite a bit for a harness ready to go, and I don't have pimp X, so I figured I was gonna have to wire some plugs up anyway. So here's how the plugs come: you just pull the seal out and crimp this end on. I crimped them because I don't have a special tool, uh, and then I soldered them too. So get a focus of that. Man, sometimes this camera sucks. Okay, this is a pretty simple setup. I'll just take you through real quick so in case you are doing this, you don't make uh, the same mistakes I did, although I only had to pull one wire back out, so I'm pretty happy with my first tries. Okay, so the wire goes through the front, and make sure this little, make sure this little tab right here isn't flat like that. Like on this one, it's flat. This is what keeps it from popping back out. So I always bend them out just a little bit more. Like so. And then it just goes through the front, and this is the second one. So it goes through like a so. And then there's a tab that sticks down like so. And there's a slot in this. And then you just pull through, and it snaps in. And then you just take your seal and run it back over. Like so, one and done. So I've got my ignition coils all wired up. Uh, I was just going to show you I'm testing them. I mean, all this wire isn't tied up, but uh, I did get a bus panel so I could be a little more organized with my output of the fuses. And uh, this way I don't have to have so many inline fuses like this one that are hard to tie up and get out of the way. But I found out that I needed a bigger fuse the first time. I think I had a 5 amp in there, which was dumb. And I got one big pop out of it. But these things really put out a lot of power. They're from uh, DIY Autotune. They are amp EFIs. Probably the same thing you get from Stinger. His just don't have the amp EFI sticker on them. They're within a dollar of the same price, I think. Um, but yeah, I made this quick mount for it. Uh, I just have a couple of 90s underneath there, bolted to the frame with the spacers running through the eyelet holes. And uh, uh, they do pull about 20 amps. 19 and a half, I think, is what they have for the spec. So you need at least a 20 amp fuse in there. And they do put a lot of fire out. So, I mean, it's a, a major spark. Uh, I was going to use LS coils because they're cheaper, but I figured why not get new coils and... Uh, just eliminate the headache of future wear outs. So not to mention if I have a high output coil on here coil over plug from an LS probably more than enough, but You don't have to worry about spark blowout if you have a high output coil so and Spark blowout is when you have so much boost that it's hard for the spark to extrude out in the boost area and Which is a lot of the reason why everybody closes their gap because it's harder for the spark to make the arc from the electrode to the ground strap. Uh, but I was going to show you the test mode on here. So, because at first I thought it wasn't going to work and then I realized my fuse was just out. So, here I have the test mode up on the screen. This is test mode IO2, which is in CAN bus test modes. And you just have to enable it. And uh, we'll just go down here. Our four coils are A, B, C, and D. I've already figured out which one D is, which I wrote D on it. 
Uh, and then we'll go to A and Pulsed. And be careful not to have any electronics too close to this because this puts off enough current that just the computer sitting on the fender right here will flash because of the amount of current. And uh, they'll arc onto anything they're touching. So be careful to have them in an area that is a, a long ways away from anything that could get damaged or arced off of. You never know if this spark goes through a ground, it could mess something up. So we'll hit pulsed. And there you go. And see how it's even, even hitting the rubber, probably because there's metal inside of this. And that one was B. Quick overview of the engine bay here. I uh, put a lot of sound, uh, radio noise suppression covers on several of the wires I thought made noise, um, including the uh, signal wire and power wire for the uh, for the pulser or hall sensor. This stuff is metal, though, so you have to think if it's next to a wire that's open, it will ground to whatever this is touching to anywhere. So think about that. And there's my simple fuse bay right there. I just screwed it onto the lip. You can see it's very sturdy. And uh, everything's easily accessible right there. One is for the hall sensor, one's for the fuel pump, one is for oh, the fuel pumps in line. Anyway, I labeled up everything, and this ran this ran fine the way it was before, but a lot of stuff was unorganized and not good enough. So I went back and did it over again. Uh, can see everything is sanded down all this is sanded down between 800 and 1000 right now and the front I just went over some thousand it's not perfect I mean you can see little places like this uh, the first layer of this did not go down very well some of that was my fault with the paint and I think the Fiberglass takes a little harder than steel because I, I tested it out on the side of the bug over there and it went on just fine. On this, it, it wrinkled up in a few places and I'm not sure why, but uh, you can see a little bit of this is what I was dealing with. I sanded out a lot of this. Uh, most of it won't be noticeable uh, in most cases, but uh, I can sand it all the way down, but I only had three coats on this. And I want to save the paint as much as I can for the next buffing. But you can see that's sanded. This is with uh, the first. <clears throat> this is with just one pass of cutting compound. And you can see it's still pretty swirly. Some big marks in there. And this is same thing, only several passes with the McGuire's 105 compound. It's kind of hard to see with the reflection of the light. But you can see there's some swirls in that right there. And then you get over to here. And this is this is actually after 105 and 205 several passes. And then I went over it with some old scratch out wax I had and it's pretty shiny so I mean my reflection is pretty decent in it I think I mean my reflection this is okay and over here 
no reflection. So here's what I got to deal with so far. Got to put the cover back on here and tie up all this wiring and put the center console back in. What? 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 <clears throat> I did get my hood on. It isn't perfect but it's super shiny. There's a few places in it that, I don't know why the paint seems so soft. I'm gonna let it sit for a while before I go sanding it anymore. Um, but I did do uh, Meguiar's 105, Meguiar's 205, and scratch out wax I had laying around. So, now we just gotta, this one's already been done before the other hood. And it's, it's all dusty now, but it's not real far off. So, and like I did up here one time too, it's far from perfect, but uh, it's pretty dirty now. That was probably over a year ago. And I mean, the edges of this are still kind of rough. It's fiberglass though, so it doesn't go straight to the edge real smoothly. Kind of sucks. But I wanted it to look like you couldn't tell, and I can't tell that it's fiberglass from here. So, the steel one is over there. It weighs a ton. It weighs a lot. Like this thing I could put, I could put this on myself, and I just set some rags on there and set it on there. The steel one, you can do that, but you gotta be a little brawnier than me. So I got my boot for this here, and, and I'll go ahead and put that in, and, and I'm not going to record all this. It's mostly boring stuff. So here's my complete exhaust. I like it simple. So all I have is one three-inch flex pipe to a V-band. Well, I have the down pipe with a three-inch flex pipe in it to soak, soak up all the vibration, and then one V-band and then one hanger and the whole exhaust comes out. So this is my new muffler sitting on top of the old one. Uh, I did cut a new tip for it and I tucked it up on, under there a lot tighter. So I jack it up so the suspension hangs down as far as it is and then move the pipe as close to the drive shaft being it's taking it in on the right side and coming out on the left side. Uh, you have the biggest space under the drive shaft for the gap for your big pipe. So I get it just about touching the drive shaft being that's with the suspension all the way down. You're never going to have it all the way down like that. And uh, then I tack everything up. So everything's tacked up now, including my the height right here. You can see this is how high it was before. I mean, this was down here. And then I just cut a new piece, stuck it in and welded it on there. And I'll cut this off. And then this just bolts to the bottom of the car. And this is just a like $45 muffler I got off Amazon and it's just straight through so hopefully it's a little quieter than the chambered muffler so I'll go ahead and weld this up so you can see here the exhaust all put together and there's our muffler with a turn down and uh 
there it is all done. Now, the flex pipe on a, a three inch flex pipe does flex a little bit. When it's broken like this one, you can see if you have a really shaky engine, it might hit something, but you know, there's only so much space down here for a three inch pipe. So you have to get creative sometimes. Here is it all tucked away. Also painted the calipers. I don't know why, but red seems like the only color to go with for calipers for me. I don't know. It just seems wrong to do any other color. And red matches everything. It's like, oh, sports car. <gasps> Domestic turd. Oh, yeah. Here I've got most of the wiring tied up. Just wanted to point out that this doesn't have a ton of outputs and I still have this much wiring, so. Uh, <clears throat> I like my Maker Spurt right here. There's just enough space for it to slide in there. It doesn't have a lot of space to move around by the time everything's in and tightened up. I got my, <clears throat> my lower shift boot on here, and you can see the, uh, I have a ground block there, and this is just, it doesn't ground through the block or anything. You just have posts that are connected across from each other. And you can see I have wires that go from one to the other and one from the other. And you can have one ground wire here and then have a ground to all these. And it's a real simple place to add stuff. Uh, especially if you have a mega squirt and you have a whole bunch of outputs. Most everything is a ground switch. So I'll have uh, on one of these, this will all go to the ground, and which is also grounded to the mega squirt. And, uh, there's a, a map switch on here, a data log switch. Uh, also, I'm using one of these for the ground for the coils. Uh, there's a sensor ground coil, not the main ground. Sensor ground coil, so this one goes to our sensor ground on Mega Squirt. And then if I ever want to add any more to that sensor ground, there's, you know, I can just add wires to these. I just screwed that to the top of the lower shift boot. And I have a relay here for... I think this is for the bottle heater and these I think one of these is being used for power for a light on one of the switches other than that uh, I took the relays out so I don't have to worry about all this space being taken up from the bottom of this thing uh, that's the back of the center console and like right here I'm still gonna have the factory clock just like before and this is for to power on our nitrous to arm it and this is our map switch, which is just a on off ground switch. So here I got the center console all in here and installed. Uh, I wanted to show you my ashtray here. I made it, uh, this is the bottle heater switch now. And it's got a little light on it. And then, uh, this is the arming switch for the nitrous. It's also got a little light on it. And uh, the uh, map switch is right here. And I'll go ahead and get this boot on. I went ahead and glued this on here. Maybe help some with the noise. Just gotta put this cover on and everything will be tied up. Starts and runs, no problem. Even got a glove box now. Washa! I did remove the buzzer, so the annoying wah is gone right now. That's pretty cool. Put the back seats in. Obviously, I put some uh, 
McGuire's leather stuff on the bottom ones there. The top's still kind of dusty. It's still kind of dusty. I just want to show you the difference in size here so everybody knows what I'm talking about. If you don't know your tire ratios, this is a good example. Now, before I had the rears on this, these are only 235s. These are only 235, 45, 17s. And I had 255, 60, 17s, I believe, were on the back before. These used to be on the front. And you can see I had this high enough that these just barely squeezed in there. But look at the size difference here. It's like two inches. <clears throat> and this will fit in there, but it just barely rubs on the edge. And I can lift it up higher, but it's going to be so tall at that point, it's going to be leaning down in the front a lot. We don't want that. Uh, at least I don't. It does handle way, way better with these on the back. And it still handles pretty good with our cheapo Douglas tires in the front. So uh, I did, I'm still going to use these wheels. These are 15 by 8s. I ordered, these are 275, 60, 15s. I ordered uh, two 45, 60, 15s, and they should be about the same height as those, I'm thinking. Um, so they're on the way. Uh, a few things we're going to cover in the next video. Uh, I got to peel this off. I had the cover for this and I forgot about it. I think I went down the road and it came off. Uh, also, my taillight has never been all the way in here. Somebody put this taillight lens on and the little stuff that crams in there between the housing and the lens didn't get all the way stuck in there. I still don't have the tack hooked up or the temp gauge. Not that the Ford temp gauge really does me a great deal of good because it doesn't display specific temp. Um, fuel gauge doesn't work either, so I only have, I'm only using the boost gauge, the speedo, and the oil pressure gauge. So. It's a cheapo RCA tablet. It's Android based. Uh, got it for my mom for Christmas, and it's like 60 bucks. I told her if she didn't like tablets, we'd know from this one. If she did, she would. Uh, even though it's a hard sell, being so slow. But anyway, she gave this to me and was like, "I don't want it. It's a piece of crap." So it's just fast enough to do Shadow Dash. And I was going to show you what Shadow Dash is. You could also do MS Droid. Uh, shadow dashes. Oh, I freaking hate these Google things. Okay, here's Shadow Dash. You can see how fast that is. So fast. Okay, so here's our. Here's our Shadow Dash. Yeah, helps a little bit. And see, if you don't buy it, uh, this is the default version. It just has speed, and, and it is. I mean, you can see everything moves when I touch it. So it does. You have to have a pretty sturdy place to put it, I think. Otherwise, it'll be jiggling G-Force all the time. But if you're going around some hard corners and it was in this sloppy holder, you'd probably still get a measurement. Um, but it does go off GPS. So you can download the free version of this and have a speedometer and an accelerometer, I guess you could say. But it is $15 for the full version. So we'll just plug in right here to the side. And it already asked me if I want to use uh, one of these apps. And we'll just get to the side here. Uh, okay. And I'll turn on the ignition. I haven't tried this out yet. It is connected too. So, see if we can get our engine readings here. Loading tune, oh, it's working. Sorry for the glare, gosh, it's horrible. Let's pull in.
to here. So here's a good view with our 245 60s. And the fiberglass is starting to show a little bit of frame here after the heat. You can see that little line right there. Now I painted the bottom of this matte black so it halfway match. And you can see where it's already, man, the traffic is noisy today. You can see where it's already rubbing in a couple places. So I ought to put some foam there. And it's also sitting low enough that my little uh, factory vent right here is rubbing on the hood. So we'll get that fixed also. All the small stuff is so fun. Not. Check us out next episode for tuning and driving. Hobbies, not rods. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.